Hi guys, Sarah the Northwood Stitcher here. Just thought I'd do another quick video. Well, not so quick maybe, but uh, have some more hints and tips for you. I'm having a very non-productive day. I've got tons of things to do, but I'd rather talk to you. We did get some snow flurries this morning. It was really pretty. Not quite sure why in March we're still having that, but sometimes it snows in April in Maine. I've had uh, quite a few comments that have jarred my memory on things I should be showing you. Somebody asked me what these things were called. And these are the wonderful little plasticized silicone huggers for your Q-snaps that hold the fabric in place. So say you have too much fabric for this size frame, you can actually roll it up and this will hug it onto the frame for you. They come in a variety of colors. You would look for fabric huggers. And if you want the ones that have the silicone band with the two magnets, those are called fabric magnetic huggers or fabric hugner magnetic. I prefer these and they really do make great cat toys as well. So whenever I want to entertain my Maine Coon cat, she gets one of the colors that I don't prefer. And hours upon hours of fun on the floor. She thinks they're wonderful. You can find these on Etsy, Amazon, a number of different um, craft sites. But uh, just do a search and then see where you're comfortable shopping. Just make sure you know the website that you're going to. I know there's a lot of fake ones out there. <clears throat> oh, I wanted to show you guys what I've been working on. I know that a lot of people call these counting pins or somebody else calls them something. I call them nitpicks. <laughs> I just think they're fun to make. Uh, nitpicks, when I looked up the definition, it's to point out, find or point out um, minor faults in a fussy pedantic way. And I would use these for counting or picking out my frog stitches. I actually got, I think these are called hat pins and they're three inches. And what I've just done is glued the beads that I thought would be pretty onto the pen. And I used the E6000, which is great stuff. And I, that way I can put down any bead I'd like. So this was fun to do. They also, the beads are big enough, they fit nicely in my little scissor jar. I picked up this terrifically gaudy goblet, either at a dump or the Goodwill. The frog doesn't fit quite well in here. I think I'm gonna use some like candle wax to stable it so it doesn't shift around too much because I don't want glass grinding on glass. But I like how the larger ones will fit. This is kind of a shallow, shallow size. But that sits on my table usually downstairs right next to my stitching chair. And I think I showed these. I made some scissor fobs. I can't wait to make more of them. I'm waiting on some supplies and when those come in, I'm, there's no stopping me. Also, I'm hoping to tag onto this video, if not this video, then a separate video, how I went about finishing this little guy. I don't have like a GoPro or anything, so I actually just filmed tiny little segments with a camera and I'll just edit them all together and I'll do a voiceover and tell you the steps. But this is still drying. I actually glued this I don't think you can see where the beginning or edge is. I can give you a hint. It's always at the bottom. But the glue holds well. And the back says my initials in the year. But I'm really pleased with this little one. This was do, 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 do. luck. Hmm. by Jan Hicks Creates. 
I found this in the thrift store. I'm so excited about it. But I think this is great because I can use it for an ornament or a pillow. I can do whatever I want. And the great thing was the kit came with the flosses. These are just the DMCs, 702, 699, and 704. I actually used some of these to do the stitching. So I've actually counted the edges from my last stitch by counting the eight of squares to measure where I wanted. I'm going to put the two um, faces of the fabrics together. So the correct side of the backing and the correct ADA. So two faces on top of each other. I'm stitching it by using the ADA holes because I'm going to stitch all the way around. And I'm going to just tie it off by going underneath the existing stitches more than I usually do. So that's probably over an inch. Just to be sure it'll stay down. I've done all the way around. So there are absolutely no openings. Now I'm going to separate, make sure I don't have the eight of cloth. I'm going to cut off a little hole. You can do a slit too. But I'm going to cut off a little hole right in the middle. So I'm going to pull it inside out now. Yeah, it's a small hole, but I've done it before, so I think I can do it again. I can always make it bigger. I'm going to push it all the way through inside out now. It's coming. It's a tight fit, but I'm just working it slowly. Now the edges are going to give me a hard time, so I'm going to use the blunt end of this paintbrush to work the corners to a oh, degree that I'm happy with, so it looks more square. That's better. Now mind you, the edges, I don't have to be too picky because the chenille is going to go around the edges. Now I can stuff through this, col uh, this hole some polyfill, and then I can get ready to add the chenille. So this is a good amount. I like it. it. didn't deform the front too much. And then because I have all these carding things, I'm going to use some dies to run some felt through, get a heart shape. And that should fit nicely. Ooh, good thing I looked. That's upside down. That's better. Covers the hole nicely. I could have manually cut a heart too. I'm going to put my initials on there and stitch all the way around. So here it is after I've added the back. I've put my uh, initials in the ear, just freehand. Not a fancy stitch, but I'm not looking at the back, I'm looking at the front. I'm going to add the chenille with some glue. I'm going to start at the top so the two ends will meet at the bottom. I'm just going to do one edge at a time with my Eileen's Tacky Glue. Let it rest for about a half an hour to the next edge. Let it rest just so it gets a good grip on there. Now I can add monofilament or fishing wire, wire through there um, just to make it an ornament or I can keep it as a pillow. I also wanted to talk to you guys about framing things differently. I always do my shopping after the holiday so you don't know what you're going to find. Sometimes you find things 80%, 90% off and I have to think quickly, is it worth it? Or am I just hoarding stuff that I don't need? I found this little thing in a Goodwill. Uh, it's one of the new things they sell. I'm gonna say it was like $1.25 by the time it was all said and done. So I flipped it over. I put my Valentine in it. Just painted the edges. For whatever reason, I guess I lucked out, but the red pretty matched pretty well, shockingly. So now, when I'm decluttering Christmas and putting up my Valentine's, all I have to do is take this one, flip it around, 
And now I can display the Valentine. I'll, I'll keep this in my Christmas box just for that. What I did was I put this on, to squish it to remember, I put it on foam board and then didn't do anything fancy with the back. I, looks like I hot glued, I think I hot glued the chenille around the edge and then I glued it down onto a craft paper that I already had from carding and I don't scrapbook but I make a lot of cards. So this collection of paper comes in handy for framing things. So it's awfully cute and it's not, this is not too deep. So it isn't too dark when you look in. When I'm looking at these pieces that are on clearance, cause I'm not gonna buy something like this for $6. I can get frames for less than that. But if I can get it for a dollar, I look for the depth or the thickness because if it's too deep, the um, stitch is gonna be so far back in there, it's gonna be dark. So I like this size. This is a really good one. I think that's a sweet stitch. That little Valentine stitch. I want to say it was a freebie. Somewhere in my pile is that pattern. That was an Erica Michaels. So it looks like www.ericamichaels.com. That was a freebie chart. And it was just a fun, quick little stitch. And I knew as soon as I saw it, it was either going to be an ornament or a quick little display piece because I don't have a lot of Valentine cross stitch yet. And now that I have taken down the Valentines and put up the Easter, <coughs> I will now put this in my Christmas box and pull it out next year and be rather pleased with myself because I'll probably forget that I did it. <laughs> I like those things you find at the last minute. Somebody asked me to show some of my cross stitch cards and I'm embarrassed to say I don't have many left. Oh, it looks like I do need to get busy. I do have a few. They're not my favorites. It's probably why I still have them and haven't given them away. So there's a number of different ways you can cross stitch and make a card. This is a good example of cross stitching. And then I've used a die set. Um, a die set will cut out that shape, that square shape in the paper. And I mounted it from the back. But then you see I covered it with an inside piece of paper. And covering it like that, well, it looks like I gave it to my dad for his birthday. And this is probably why I'm I'm not paying attention to this card so much in my collection. I made a couple of them, but I lost my dad. This reminds me of him. But um, what was I going to say? You don't have to have this fancy setup of cutting something out. You can also just mount any cross stitch to the front of a card simply by fraying the edges. And when you're going to do that, you're going to count doo -doo -doo, with a counting pin. You count how many, at, from, from your last stitch, how many rows you want all the way around. And then you just start shredding it. Let's see if it'll work. I'll use my pin to start it. And just start fraying the edges. And then you can straighten it out. You see how it's getting frayed? So that's another great way to mount it to the front of the card. Just buy 3M, don't get cheap stuff from the dollar store because it won't hold. Get some good grade double-sided sticky tape or even terrifically tacky tape you can get in some uh, different craft stores. I think I just dropped the end piece here. And that will hold it in place on the card. Or, I did a little class once with these learn to stitch kits. I thought I'd keep this one for a child's birthday. It's pretty big. I want to say that count is possibly seven, maybe even bigger. But I did a couple of double mountings after I used some die sets to cut some shapes out. And then I did it on a smaller scale. 
That's a little cuter. Teenagers. That would be a good one for a teenager. And again, I think I just mounted this on top of a white card. And then this purple piece is the one that's cut. So I used a punch and then just um, punch the edges with an edger or a corner edger and mounted it. And then I put this on top. I don't have any examples of the fraying. The second one, second panda. And then I did, I wanna say this one was a prairie scholar freebie or little mini card. But I don't remember. I did this on, I think, 14 count just to make it bigger. And I have a stamp that says just a note. I really like this look. This was. This was done from behind. So this inner piece is cut out and then this is another framed piece that I put over it using my fancy die sets for card making. I covered it up with the same color paper. I put a, another piece of paper on the inside because when you start making the front heavy, you kind of have to make the back almost even weight. It's just gonna keep falling over. And this is a perfect size for framing. Or you can get the kits, cross stitch carding kits. I love those because you can do whatever you want. So live, love, laugh. The cards come already cut. You just mount it in there. And I think it's a trifold. So if you see these on clearance, they're great to collect if you can use, if you have multiple uses for the um, designs, but the cards are handy. Yeah, it's a trifold. So this would open up again that way. You'd put your cross stitch there, tape, 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 double-sided tape, tape, tape. And then you fold that one over, it sticks beautifully. And then you have your, your card. These are a little top heavy, so I should put an additional um, piece of paper in here maybe with some little lace motif punch outs. You don't have to, but it does make it a little easier. We'll add weight and we'll add postage. But I love doing those. And this is from the same kit design. Hi there. I thought that was precious. And you don't have to put this with an aqua, this pattern with aqua, or this pattern with a pink, do whatever you want. Or ditch the patterns, use the cards for something else. You can also get these types of cards that are for photos, and you just have to make sure that you can access how that card's put together. So can you open up a package and look to see if it's possible that you can mount fabric in there? I also wanted to show you guys something really cool. My husband bought me a couple of years ago for Christmas. The um, DMC uh, Anniversary 24 Karat Gold Floss. I don't know what to do with it. I absolutely love this stuff. It's gorgeous. And of course, I don't want to use it for anything but for something for him. So I think I'm probably going to... There was a pattern I showed you guys last time. I'm gonna figure out how to incorporate some of the floss in this piece, or in that piece, because I'll give that to him for, I think, Valentine's or an anniversary. This stuff is really pretty. I gotta put my water somewhere else. I keep thinking I'm gonna knock it over today. Oh, you can't get this anymore. And I even checked on eBay for some reason. I guess if you have one, you're keeping it. But I know you guys are like me if you have one and you don't know what to do with it. If you're one of those rare people who has used it, please comment. I like to know what you're doing with it. Because this is just too pretty. I just want to, I don't know, I just want to keep it forever. <laughs> so when you open it up, there's this little um, card that says 
24 karat guarantee the authentic. Maybe. I don't know how to pronounce that. I, I have taken a little strand off to see how it feels. It feels lovely. But in all honesty, it's probably going to be just like stitching with a metallic, which is not fun. So I, I know I have to be sure of what to use it on. And then it comes with a little book about the history of TMC. And it... <laughs> It's another little booklet with, I don't know how many different languages. So this is not um, partial to just English. And even in the book, I think there's four different languages. It's a beautiful little picture book. Talking about the history. They did a lovely job. I, mean, I was floored when I opened this. But I'm at a loss. I have to come up with something special. Very, very special. <laughs> this is even behind a little piece of plastic to protect it somewhat. I mean, I've already made a mess of mine because I was fondling it and I might have even left some drool on it somewhere. But I just love this. So yeah, I need a swift kick to use it. That's what it was bought for. And have a little confidence in what I decide to do with it. <coughs> oh, some of the other little nitpicks I did. I did butterflies and bees. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm into bees. And I thought they were really cute. I'm hoping at some point this might take off and I think I'll have enough viewers to maybe support like a little um, website where I can do different things like the, um, I don't know, my beading work, the scissor fobs and the nitpicks, maybe even some starting to do some graphs. Maybe, who knows? I never thought I'd do a YouTube video. Oh, and I wanted to talk about the difference between Perforated paper, perforated plastic, vinyl leave. Wait till you see my collection. Ooh, I have it in a hefty bin because it's a hefty collection. I think I've been using this stuff since the 80s. I don't know if you guys remember those plastic mugs. That's where you saw the vinyl, plastic vinyl, the vinyl leave. They were for the mugs. People would stitch on this vinyl plastic, very flexible stuff. Not so great for ornaments because of its flexibility, but great to go around the inside of a mug after you stitched a little design on it. And you can still find this stuff. It makes great bookmarks because it's so flexible and it's not too thick. It's a very strange feeling. And I suppose these little fabric hookers would be great to hold some of these. Or maybe birthday paper rolls, Christmas paper rolls. I do like to keep these in a roll. Now the perforated plastic, that's the vinyl leaf. That is a lot stiffer. See, it's not flopping over. It does have movement to it, but this does make good little ornaments because your ornaments aren't gonna be so big that they're gonna fold over on the edge, but they have better stability. And you just back it with like a piece of felt or something, but it's got round holes. This is a 14 count, right? Yeah, 14 count mesh perforated plastic. I wonder, I'm sorry I didn't study it. I think there's a couple of different, Darcy, but I think there's a couple of different companies that make it. Ah, maybe not. This is Craft World. That's the paper, perforated paper. Now, perforated paper and perforated plastic, 
The perforated plastic comes in different colors. So does the vinyl. And the perforated paper comes in a multitude of different colors. You can get ivory, you can get white. This piece has been cut. It's the same thing as the perforated plastic, but it's um, paper and it's more fragile. In my bucket, I have gold, I have white, I have ivory. I found it at thrift stores, I found it at yard sales, I found it at craft stores going out of business. Um, there was a time, I think, was it in the 90s? The machine broke and there was a shortage. <laughs> I had a panic. And yeah, I might have gone around and bought up what I could find on eBay and places like that. Oh, I got red. These are great though. You use these a lot in the Mill Hill ornaments. Um, any kind of design that has, I don't think you do it with half stitches. Whole stitch designs are great. You can put them on the uh, perforated paper if you want to make an ornament. Ah, here is a brown plastic, perforated plastic. Great for gingerbread houses. Yeah, this whole bucket is full. I've got a silver paper. You can get clear perforated plastic. When I buy a Mill Hill kit, particularly the smaller ornament ones, I make sure I have all the parts to do that kit twice. I feel the kits are pricey enough that I should really go ahead and do two. For the most part, they give you enough material to do two. One to gift, one to keep. This is very heavy, but very handy to have. My friends who know me, I always say, don't go to the store, come here first. <laughs> it's true. Probably have it. The store might not. <clears throat> I want to do a video too for you guys of uh, working on a mill hill um, because you can, the mill hills have gotten so advanced. It used to be when they first came out, they were all beads. I think I've got a, I wanted to show you guys some of those in my little kit over, or drawer over here. I have a collection, huge stash of beads that I just number for the mill or the, um, oh my gosh, yeah, the number of the type of bead it is. These are vintage mill hills. I made numerous ornaments because I thought I would gift them. Some of these I forgot I had, and I just kept them for myself. So I have, in this pile here alone, I have four, four nutcrackers. So these nutcrackers are all beads. I'll never part with this design or pattern because it's very, I don't know, comforting doing um, just little beaded ornaments. And these are done on the perforated paper. I just put the felt on the back. Now, they have done a wreath design, modernized it on several occasions. So I think they have a harvest one. They have another Christmas one with little bells on it that I've done miniature jingle bells. But this one is all beads. There, there aren't any cross stitches with just floss showing. Now that they've incorporated floss and as well as the beads, and a variety of different stitches, they've gotten more complicated. So I just don't, I don't do them as readily as I used to. This is a very old pattern of one of their doves, all beads, all beaded Santa. 
I think that one's fun to do. And I did, there's Crescent Santas. I've got another Santa down here. Jack in the Box. That's a cutie. I remember when I did this, it was a little difficult for me because I wasn't quite sure how to do the angles. Oh, this is all tangled up. Oh, we got the candy canes. I actually still have some candy canes downstairs to eat. All beads. Those are great. And the little crescent moon Santas. Eh. I have them on fishing wire. Some are on fishing wire and some are on just like corn inch ribbon. Those are so sweet. Now these, these have some cross stitches in them. In the beard, you can see it's like every other hole is a bead and every other hole is a cross stitch. So I think that was probably one of the modernizing effects when they started doing these with more complicated steps to them. I should show you my wanna do's from the Mill Hills. Let me go get them. <laughs> There's a lot. I have more. <laughs> These are the ones that are put in a container. <laughs> so let me look at the little ones first. I do collect like tiny little frames in case I want to frame one. But look at these. You can do different beaded ornaments. Why haven't I done these yet? I have so many things to do. I just finished this one. It's downstairs. Girlfriend of mine, thanks Sophia, sent me this. And I did it for my husband and put it in his stocking. He loves it. I love that one. Charm Santa Face. They did a series of these. Okay, so this one's Santa Claus. And this one's San Nicolo. And here is Charming Santa. So you see the, how they're different series? So this is series two. Oh, Chris Kringle. I'm gonna get busy with these. I right, let me put the Santas in my bag. La 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 la. Ollie Elf. I did this one, but I'm gonna do it again. Holiday Polar Bear. Just adorable. I think that was a duplicate kit too. Ice skates. A lot of these kits are on 123stitch.com. And I truly believe that's probably the best place to get them. Santa and Rudolph. Boy, this one looks old. Yeah, 2012. Ginger Man Snow Charmer. And it comes with all the beads, even the little charms. The hardest part about these kits is separating the beads. 
paisley tree. I think that's sweet. They did a great job with the paisley design in that. Oh, I got two of those. And I did make these up. I think I put them in my Christmas ornaments. Winter greetings. That's Holly. <clears throat> Jolly. Another ornament. Sapphire snow. Star Santa. Looks like this was a gift in something. Snowflake. I love Christmas. Love heart. And joy tree. All right. Okay. The bigger mill hill kits. I have quite a few. I did absorb my dad's collection. So I have quite a bit of different ones. You can get the mill hills either on perforated paper or on fabric. I'm not quite sure how they differentiate that, but it should be in the description. This one's done on a linen. Christmas cheer Santa. Is that a woodland? No, that's a gym shore. So I'm trying to keep these in groups. Then I have the woodland Santas. So there's Frosty Santa. Bell Ringer Santa. Oh, a duplicate. Holly and Ivy Santa. that nut hatch. Now you can get a Mill Hill frame or you can get a natural wood frame at most craft stores and just paint it yourself. Should have done that one for um, St. Patty's Day, but I didn't. Cut flowers and the little ball jars. Holiday delivery. Out on a limb. This one's done on fabric. And this one, does it have any beads? It does. It have it has two different bead colors. There's another one on it looks like linen. Yep, 28 count linen called Happy Skeleton. Moonlit Kitties. Midnight Owl. That's on paper. Sugar Skull. And Dia los Muertos. Mm, let's see what else. Ah, Home for Christmas. I love the little snowflakes. I think the snowflakes are beads. Yeah, looks like they're beads. Train Depot. Village Bakery. Let me see, I got this probably on eBay. Maybe it was a yard sale. It says, no perforated paper. I just cut one and put it in. Bookseller. Mm. 
And this one is really pretty. What is it called though? Window box in bloom. And it looks like it's done on a 28 count linen. And I haven't started this yet because they're little stitches that are done with ribbon. I need instant gratification right now. So this is something that I want to do, but I will put it aside for now. You saw a duplicate in there. Maybe I'll do that for a, uh, a giveaway. But talking about that, The Daily Stitcher has given me a chart to give away. And we're not going to mention giveaway in the comments because we'll get all kinds of weirdos. And I don't want to attract the trolls and the algorithms who are going to be trying to scam us with different things. So I'm going to hold up the chart. If you're interested, leave a comment with the code word in it, like a sentence using the code word. I will put your name or your YouTube handle in, I have a little spinny wheel on my phone, and the next video I'll spin it, we'll find out who won, and then you can contact me through my Gmail, which is thenorthwoodstitcher at gmail.com, and I'll send it to you. So that would be fun. So this is Stitching with the Housewives. Berry Bakery, strawberries. It really, I love how they did the little strawberry containers. You can see the little lines in there. The pedestals are really neat. So if you're interested in this chart, and this is um, sponsored by the Daily Stitcher, I will send you her card as well. So you can look her up and do some shopping. If you're interested in this chart and you'd like a chance at my spinning wheel, leave me a comment with the word berry in it and how berry much you like cross-stitching. And I'll enter you in. I'll probably do another video within three days. So if you're looking at this video and the video is more than, say, three days old, it's probably, and there's another video, it's probably been given away. I'm not quite sure how to do that part and what the time frame should be on it, but, or how about we do this? The first April video I make, um, we'll do the spinning wheel. So you got plenty of time. Cause people work, people got stuff to do. That would be fun. And, you saw my duplicate in my stash, and I'll maybe I'll put that one up next. So anyway, I'm gonna get going and start some real work around here. I have to go do some errands. But until I see you guys next time, have a great day, happy stitching, and be safe.